All right, question 18 is next. How many P orbitals are occupied in an oxygen atom? All right, so oxygen is the electron configuration for oxygen. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So our diagram would look like this, this, and this. So my 1s2, my 2s, my 2p, I've got 1, 2, 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, and then 4 electrons. Um, so how many p orbitals are occupied? To be considered occupied, you just need to have one electron. So all three p orbitals are occupied for oxygen. All right, question 21 is next. It looks like. All right, gravity waves have the same velocity as light with a wavelength of one times 10 to the six meters. Um, what is the frequency, right, for gravity waves? So here we know that they move the speed of light we know the wavelength, so I just need speed of light equals my frequency times my wavelength. We're looking for the frequency, so I'm going to rearrange this to say my frequency equals speed of light divided by my wavelength. They were nice, and they gave you um, everything right in meters. So our frequency equals my speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second all over one times 10 to the six meters when we divide meters cancels out and we're going to be left with frequency in inverse seconds right so breaking up the uh calculator for the first time tonight oh that's going to go in there actually that's pretty easy Yeah, so I get like 300, right? We get like three e to the two inverse seconds for our frequency. I would say two significant figures because I've got two significant figures, right, in the wavelength that we were given there. For question 21, I think we've had a request for question 19 in the meantime. Right, question 19 of the following, which gives the correct order of atomic radius? Again, our handy little periodic table, um, right? Atomic radius increases down a group and it also increases to the left on the periodic table. So uh, let's see, we've got sodium, I've got magnesium, I've got phosphorus, silicon and argon. So um, basically, right? We are looking for largest, based on these signs, we're looking for largest to smallest. So the largest should be the farthest to the left. So that would be sodium is the largest, followed by magnesium, followed by silicon, phosphorus, and then argon, right? We're basically working our way across the periodic table. So choice D for question 19. What's the periodic trend that increases from left to right? Our effective nuclear charge increases from left to right. Um, electronegativity, right? Electronegativity increases from lower left to the upper right, just like our electron affinity. Yeah, so Justin, I would give you, if, if I give you this question, it would be two ways. It would be either, it would either be within a group or it would be within um, a, a row, right? So that you don't have to worry about, oh, okay, this, or it would be far enough apart where maybe I give you lithium and then a few in like row four and then like one way down here in like row six so that they were far enough apart. So it was easy to say, oh, lithium would be the smallest, then this group, and then 
you know, um, so I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't kind of jump all over the place for this question because yeah, that would be too hard to kind of answer which one has the larger radius or not. All right. So question 20 as well. All right, so question 20 um, for our ionic radii, right? The more electrons we lose, the smaller we are. So the smallest is gonna be calcium two plus. All right, next would be potassium. And then our anions are always larger than the parent atom. So that would put chloride as the largest, all right? And that would sandwich argon right in between. So cations are always smaller, anions are always larger. Um, and they're actually going to wrap around the, the neutral atom of argon there for question 20. All right, question 22. The maximum number of electrons that can have N equals 4, L equals 2. All right, so N equals four, that's our fourth quantum row in the periodic table. Um, when L is zero, that's our S orbital. When L is one, that's a P orbital. When L is two, that's a D orbital, right? So this is just saying how many electrons, right? The maximum number of electrons that can be in our fourth row in our D orbitals. So. I know I've got five D orbitals times two electrons each, right? I can hold a maximum of 10 electrons there. And I kind of like I already said earlier, Mia, right? Like nanometers to meters, megahertz, gigahertz to hertz, you know, kilojoules to joules. Those would be like the good ones or the big ones that you should know. Um, question 23, right? The musical note E on a bass guitar is characterized by a frequency of 41.2 hertz. What's the wavelength in meters of that note, given that the speed of sound is um, 343 meters per second? All right. Back to question 22 momentarily. Um, it is not... 5D as in the uh, fifth quantum row, it, it means there's five D orbitals. Yeah, like Lexi said, I've got five D orbitals at two electrons each. Um, so here, I'll erase that and I'll say I've got five, four D orbitals, right? At two electrons each. And so that's where that came, comes from. Um, I did question 23 a few years ago because I just thought it was like interesting. I don't know if people are into music would think about like the frequency and wavelength of the music that you're listening to. There's the same relationship between frequency and wavelength of music. Um, the only difference or of sound, right? The only difference is it's not moving the speed of light. It's moving the speed of sound, but we have the same relationship um, where basically the speed equals our frequency times our wavelength. So I can find um, the wavelength, right? Wavelength equals the speed of sound divided by my frequency of that sound, right? So my wavelength equals, right? The speed of sound, 343 meters per second all over my frequency, which would be 41.2 inverse seconds. Seconds cancel out, right? And we're left with a wavelength in meters. So 343 divided by 41.2. Right, I get a I get a wavelength that's like 8.33 um, meters for question 23. All right, the last two questions, question 24 and 25. All right, so our speed uh, radar detector, they operate on a frequency of 12 gigahertz. What is the wavelength of that? Um, 
So can anyone check and see if this question is a variable? Is it 12 gigahertz for everybody or is it like a different frequency for everybody? It's a different frequency. All right. Is it two significant figures? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so Alex has got 18.9. So, okay, 19.13, thank you. That's what I was looking for, three said figs. So I will just go with 12.0 gigahertz because if I write down one of your numbers, I'm gonna bet a thousand dollars that in five minutes, someone's gonna ask where that number came from. So I will save myself that question and just say, 12 gigahertz from the question. Um, in one gigahertz, right, I've got a billion hertz. So one times 10 to the nine. Um, yeah, so, um, right, one gigahertz is a billion hertz. And then one megahertz is a million, one times 10 to the six. Um, hertz and then hertz right one hertz equals one inverse second so we can directly go whatever answer we get in hertz we can take that number directly um, into inverse seconds and that's the units we need for our calculation so um, i get 1.2 all right times 10 to the 10 hertz or 1.2 times 10 to the 10 inverse seconds we're looking for the wavelength, right? So again, speed of light equals my frequency times my wavelength. I rearrange this to say my wavelength equals um, speed of light divided by my frequency. All right, so my wavelength equals my speed of light three times 10 to the eight meters per second, all over my frequency, 1.2 times 10 to the 10 inverse seconds. So when we divide, right, our seconds cancel out and we're left with meters, right, which is good because we're looking for a wavelength, which should be in meters. So three times 10 to the eight meters per second divided by 1.2 times 10 to the eight, or 10 to the 10, sorry. Yeah, so just be careful. I did, there's one little typo right there. All right, this should be, 10 to the 10, and I get a wavelength of like 0 0.025 uh, meters, sort of three significant figures, right? 2.50 e to the minus two meters would be our wavelength there for question 24. For question 25, right, how many photons of light are released from a 0.5 watt laser that has a wavelength of 585 nanometers? And we run that laser for 10 seconds. So some different steps we have to do here, right? Number one, we wanna find our total power. Well, I've got a 0.5 watt laser and I know that one watt is one joule per second. So I basically have 0.5 joules per second, and I run this laser for 10 seconds. So I'm basically gonna release right, five joules of energy. That's the total energy. Now I need to find energy per photon. So now I need to take this wavelength of light and then find out how much energy is in one photon of this wavelength of light so that I can figure out how many total photons I would need right, to give me five joules of energy. So we want energy equals Planck's constant speed of light over my wavelength. Wavelength, 585 nanometers. That needs to be right, in meters, so one meter is one times 10 to the nine nanometers. So I've got 5.85 times 10 to the minus seven meters. All right, so now I can find energy. Energy equals Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times my speed of light, three times 10 to the eight 
meters per second all over my wavelength and 5.85 times 10 to the minus seven meters. We multiply, seconds cancel out. We divide, meters cancel out, and I'm left with joules, which is good because we're looking for energy, right? And so remember, this is the energy for one single photon of light, All right? So 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 times the speed of light, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Divide that by uh, 5.85 um times 10 to the minus seven and i get like 3.397 times 10 to the minus 19 joules and this is joules per photon all right so now we can go back and say all right how many photons do we need? All right, I've got five joules. And I know for every one photon of light, right, we basically have to divide by the energy to see how many times this goes in there. For every one photon, I've got 3.3, you know, 98 times times 10 to the minus uh, 19 joules. All right, to get some really big numbers. So five divided by that. And yeah, I would say three significant figures based on the numbers given. So I would say 1.47 times 10 to the 19 joules, or sorry, uh, photons. Of light we would need to represent that much energy. All right, stop the recording.